With spring in full swing, I decided I wanted to make some upgrades to the backyard of our new home. We are super fortunate to have a pool and the previous owners did a great job with all the landscaping. However, I was wanting to add a few things and hiding this pool equipment and protecting it from the constant sun was first on my list. The previous owners were obviously thinking the same thing before selling us the house because they had installed these 4x4 posts in concrete with the idea of building a structure in this area as well. So I took what was already there and I decided that a pergola would be a great solution for this area. Also, I'll be building two other pergolas over some sitting areas on my back porch so a matching one on the side of the house would tie them all in. It should provide some shade from the sun beating down on the equipment and I'll attach horizontal deck boards across the front to block the view of all the unsightly PVC pipes and pumps. I went ahead and pre-stained all the wood before getting started so that once the pergola was built, it would make the second and final coat much easier to apply. As you can imagine, this is the most boring part of the process, but at least my little buddy Hunter from across the street came and visited me for a few minutes. He likes to help. I started the building process by cutting two 2x8s to length from my ledger that will be attached to the brick of the house. I'll be using 3 8 inch concrete Tapcon screws to attach them, so I pre-drilled the holes in the wood and then I got some help to hold the boards in place on the wall. Once the holes were marked, we used a hammer drill to pre-drill into the brick and then attach the boards. With the post already in place, we turned our attention to the headers. I used 2x8s for these and I did a header on both the front and the back of the post. To create the crowns, I measured and marked a line to designate where the outside of the 4x4 post would fall on the header. From that line, I measured and marked a 4 inch overhang on the designated bottom edge of the board. From that mark, I used a carpenter square to mark a 45 degree upward angle to the top edge of the board. Once I had the 45 cut, then I cut one inch off the point. Overall, this created a 10 and a half inch overhang on the total crown. Now there is a ton of different ways to complete this overhang and crown look. It just depends on how detailed you want to get and how much time you have. In order to determine the height of the header, we used a 2x6 board resting on top of the ledger with a level to make a mark on the 4x4 post. Now, this is where I messed up because I wasn't thinking ahead. I'll explain my mistake in just a minute, so hang in there and let's see how far I get on this build before realizing what I did wrong. I attach the headers to the front and back of the 4x4s with nails, but don't worry, I'll go back later and add some screws. The nails add some sheer strength for the downward weight, and the screws keep the 2x8s tight to the 4x4s over time. With the headers attached, I then turned my attention to the 2x6 joist. I cut the crowns in all of my joists using the same measurements and methods as I did in the headers. I measured and cut one and then used it to trace the angles to the rest of the boards. With the help of my buddy Brian, we started placing the joist on top of the header and the ledger to figure out our spacing between each one. So if you didn't figure it out as I was doing it, which I'm sure most of you did, here's the explanation of where I messed up earlier. For this pergola, I'll be using joist hangers that will put the top of my 2x6 joist level with the top of my ledger. 
So what I should have done was marked another line on the post that was five and a half inches lower than the one that I marked level with the top of the ledger, which is the width of the two by six joist that I'll be using. But I didn't do that and I didn't realize it until right about now. I figured at this point we already had several joists set in place, so we should just go ahead and set the rest of the 2x6s in place and determine our spacing before we take them all down and either move the header or the ledger, whichever one. With all the joists in place, we agreed that the spacing we came up with looked good, so we went ahead and screwed the joist hangers in place under each board. At that point, we decided that it would be much easier to move the ledgers up five and a half inches instead of deal with the headers, so we went to work on redoing that. It only took a few minutes in actuality, and besides a few extra holes in the brick that I have to fill, it wasn't that too terrible of a mistake. Once that was done, we started putting all the two by six joists in place and screwing them to the joist hangers. One of the more challenging things about this build wasn't actually the pergola itself, but shooting video and audio outside. The wind blew the entire time, and because I gotta speed up the video, you hear a lot of chipmunk talk. And remember, as always, if you have a question, leave them down in the comment section. I'll be sure to get to them all, and I'll answer them the best that I can. Instead of notching the joist, I just went ahead and used these cheap L brackets that I painted black to secure each of the joists to the header. They added plenty of strength to each joist and saved me a ton of time not having to notch each board. To help hide the pull equipment, we pre-stained and attached six inch wide deck boards to the front of the post. This was extremely simple and to give it some depth, I left a four and a half inch gap between the ones that were on the front of the four x fours and then I equally spaced the ones attached to the back so that they filled in the gaps. I really like this look and it provided some nice cover for the equipment. After all the boards were in place, I went back and added screws to all the areas that needed it, and then I capped the ends with a deck board to give it a more finished look. This entire project, which included the pre-staining of all the wood, took about two days to complete, and with a little help of holding up the boards from my neighbors, my wife, and anybody else that I could find to help me out, it was really a pretty easy project. All right, that does it for us today. I'm really happy the way this turned out. It's an awesome structure that looks really good on the side of the house, provides some great cover for the pool equipment, uh, add some shade just to you know help on the wear and tear of it. There's a few things that, of course, I did wrong, like the header and ledger height. Uh, also, if I had to do it all over again, I think that I would not have placed the L brackets on the inside of this header. I think that I would have left this off, installed this header, then did my joist, put my L brackets on the inside, and then installed this uh, header, that would have hidden those L brackets where you would have never even saw them. It's not something I thought about at the time when I was building it, but hindsight 2020, I'll definitely be doing that on the next two pergolas. Don't forget, I'll put affiliate links down in the description section below to all the tools and materials I used in this video, so you can click on them and check them out. Anytime you use those links, it supports the channel and we appreciate it. I'll go ahead and tee up another video right there as I'm sure you'll love it. And we'll see you on the next video and in the Pillony Box Wood Shop.